Hey guys, welcome to another video. Although there is a lot of information out there regarding LEDs and doing your own projects, I, for instance, have quinled.info with loads of information about LEDs and LED strip and all kinds of other stuff related to it. It's still kind of hard to grasp what you need to take on into account when doing your own project. So let's try to tackle that one topic at a time. And today we're taking a look at voltage drop. What is it? Is it a real thing? And what can you do to prevent it or combat it? To start off, there are basically two types of LED strip. Digital LED strip and analog LED strip. Now, this video isn't about the differences between those two. I'll do a video about that soon. Uh, but what you need to know is that digital LED strip mostly runs at 5 volt, sometimes at 12 volt, and that analog LED strip most often runs at 12 volt or 24 volt. This has a direct influence on the amount of voltage drop you'll see. If the starting voltage is 24 volt instead of 5 volt and you lose one volt because of resistance or voltage drop in the strip, the amount of percent of volts you lose is a lot lower with 24 volt than with 5 volt. But we're here to do some testing. So what I have here is I have three times five meters or 16 feet of 12 volt 60 LEDs per meter LED strip. And well, this is bottom of the barrel crap. But Sadly enough, this is also what most people end up buying. They see 5 meters or 16 feet of 60 LEDs per meter LED strip and think, well, this must be a great deal for $6. And well, it kind of is. It'll give you light. And I'll do another video about the quality of white light. Um, but there's inherent downsides to buying that kind of strip. The reason is that cheap strip uses cheap strip material. And basically that comes down to the amount of copper that is in the strip. The lower the amount of copper in the strip, the higher the voltage drop will be because of increased resistance for, well, basically power making it from point A to point B. So basically voltage drop is the direct effect you see from the resistance of the strip. But how big of a problem is this in reality? Well, as I said, I have uh, 15 meters or about 50 feet of strip hooked up here, and let's do some tests. Okay, here's a quick overview of the setup, and I'm thinking the issue is immediately apparent. The strip starts at the left and ends at the right, but let's take a look at the whole setup quickly. I have an input wattage meter right here, and it's currently registering about 37 watts. Then I have a 12 volt, 150 watt power supply, as you can see here, but we're currently only using 37, but we'll see how that changes later on. Then I have a Quinn LED Deca Pro, a work in progress name. It's a prototype board I've been working on. Here is a failed one, <laughs> but the output channel is currently set to uh, 100, oh, you can't see that, 100%. So. Well, as you can see here, the problem is immediately apparent, as I said. This LED strip is really bright, and this LED strip really isn't. And I might be my camera doing some focus adjustments, but if I hold these together... Yeah, that's not even a quarter of the brightness that the, front, the first part has. So even after the first... Uh, five meters you can see a clear drop in output and if we measure at the end of the 50 meters or 50 feet we only have about 8 volts of output where it should be 12 volts. Voltage drop is definitely a thing especially with these cheap strips as I explained but let's see what happens if I add multiple voltage injection points and see if we can improve the situation a little bit Basically working around the problem of the drop voltage if you want to use a strip this long, for instance, lining 
the whole uh, ceiling in your room or something like that. Okay, so we had the front of the strip hooked up and now let's add separate power injection using this little wire I prepared here. Hold on. There we go. And let's hook that up to the back of the strip. Well, basically like the diagram on the screen is showing now. So we have beginning and end injection instead of only beginning. Starting with the overview again, nothing on the camera has changed. But as you can see, now that I've added this little cable to the output and hooked it up to the end of the strip, we're now seeing 11.62 volts so close to 12 volt at the end of the strip and also at the beginning of the strip. If you look at the power meter, we've basically doubled the power usage. So from 35 watts, we're now using 70 watts just by adding this little cable. That means the strip was really limiting the power that was getting through the strip material. So let me move the voltage meter now from the end of the strip where we're injecting power to the middle of the strip and see what the voltage is there and if we maybe need extra power injection points. So now the power meter is after the first five meters of strip and I've spliced it in here. As you can see, we're getting 9.23 volts. So that's still far off of the 12 volt we should be getting. So that means that even with front and end injecting, we're still not getting an average voltage that's close to 12 volt over the whole of the strip. And if you look at the overview again, well, it's probably hard to see on camera, but the middle section is still a lot dimmer. So if you'd have this up in your room, well, this would basically look really ugly. So let's replace that voltage meter and splice in another cable to inject more power. Okay, I'm back in my overview spot again. And as you can see, it's become even brighter. And if we check the power or the socket power meter, we're now measuring 107 watts. So that's 35 to 107 watts by splicing in some more power injection point. So as you can see, I have the, oh, oh no, you can't see it's overexposed now because of all the light. Well, there's one point connection point remaining where I can splice in more power. And that's currently measuring 9.85 volts. That's basically connecting the second five meter strip to the third five meter strip. Overall, the result looks pretty good, but for science sake, we're still only at 9.85 volts, so let's see what happens if we splice in another cable and see if the voltage equalizes. So I'm starting with a face shot and my camera settings still haven't changed. Can you see the difference before when we started out? I didn't add any additional LED strip, I just added, and added some voltage injection points. And now basically if I take any random measurement uh, alongside the strip, I get about 11.38 to 11.5 volts everywhere. So voltage is pretty, what, pretty much equal all over the strip. And while light output has become insane and power usage, we went from 35 watts in total to over 130 watts. That's almost a quadrupling of power input to the power supply, which as I mentioned before was 150 watts. And that's the reason why I took a 150 watt and not like a 50 or 60 watt. If you properly feed these strips, so I have a single output terminal here that goes to these distribution blocks. And then I have the first LED strip connected directly. It goes all the way up and down. And then I splice in power here, another whole strip. I splice in power here, another whole strip. And then I splice in power here. So that is how you can use, well, cheap strip, I guess. I'm not recommending you do that, but you can and still have equal brightness all over. Okay, let's, uh, let's discuss this a little bit. Ah! Okay, the amount of light output with four injection cables versus one is insane, the difference. 
Let me, uh, since this is a dimmer, let me, oh, wait. Dim that down a little bit. And let me turn on my normal studio lighting. Somewhat normal, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I think my camera's confused with all the light. Let me just give it more light. There we go. That should be okay. Where was I? So, yeah, voltage drop, it's a real thing. Especially using these cheap strips, the effect is, well, can be denied. So how do you prevent this or combat this? Well, to prevent it, it's easy. Buy better quality strip. These cheap strips from China, yeah, they produce some light. It's crappy light. We'll talk about that in another video. But it outputs light. But as you can see, even one strip will show like half drop in light output just over the five meters alone. So what you can do is you can use shorter segments. So for instance, if you used five times a one meter segment and fed those all individually, that would work. You'd get full brightness output of one strip. And instead of it using 35 watts, it would probably use around 60 or 70 watts. That's also why you most often don't achieve the ratings that the Chinese listings give for these LED strips. Although the LEDs are certainly capable of it, the strip material just doesn't have enough copper to transfer that amount of power. Now, if you don't know what to buy, on my quinled.info website, I have strips I personally use and have tested listed, uh, basically strips I like to use. And if you want to make sure you get some good strip, check out that article. I'll have that linked in the description below. Second, where possible, use a higher voltage. This is a 12 volt LED strip. And basically, if we would be using 24 volt LED strip, even with this same strip material with the same amount of copper, the effect would be basically halved. So we'd have a lot less voltage drop over the same distance. Or rather, as I explained earlier, we'll have the same amount of volts dropped, but percent wise, it's less because we started with a higher voltage. So an example of both these things is, here's a shot of this strip versus some 24 volt color diode strip I like to use. As you can see, the color diode strip is much thicker and it also uses 24 volts. So where this one wouldn't even use 35 watts over the five meter distance, the color diode strip uses up to 120 watts for the same five, five meter distance. Now, it also has a lot higher power LEDs and emits a lot more light and has better CRI quality and quality LEDs and all kinds of stuff, but the difference in strip is clearly visible. But if you don't want to buy LED strip that costs that much, I can understand that. So instead of preventing it all out together, you buy reasonable quality LED strip. How then do you combat the voltage drop? Well, we just looked at that. If you make sure to run wires next to your LED strip and inject voltage at certain points, like in these diagrams we saw earlier, you basically prevent or combat the problem by carrying extra power using extra copper next to the LED strip. So hopefully that explains voltage drop a little bit and the effect it has on LED strip. What you can do to prevent it in the first case, and then if you still suffer from it because you want to use long lengths, how to combat the issue. In reality, if you want 15 meters of LED strip, you basically can get out of using decent quality strip and doing some injection points. But you might not need uh, four as I used here, but you might get away with like three or maybe even two. Check out my website. Uh, there's custom LED dimmers on there. You can build as a DIY project with works, which works with Home Assistant and all kinds of Home Demodica and stuff like that. But I also have wiring diagrams per dimmer and in overall, uh, how to hook up LED strip. For instance, if you have a single five meter strip, instead of feeding it at this end or at this end, what you can do, instead of feeding it at both ends, which would work, you can feed it in the middle. You'll have to solder it there, but then basically the distance from that point to the ends is two and a half meters, 
times 2 instead of 5 meters times 1 or times 1, or again, both points, 2.5 meters. So, by injecting power intelligently, you can get away with using less wire. Okay, well, that does it for this video. I'm planning on doing more videos like this sort in the future. If you enjoyed it, maybe uh, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comments. And if you'd like to have a more lengthy discussion, check out the Discord server, which is also linked in the description, where we can have a chat. Okay, thanks for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.